That was really inspirational. Thank you, Sonny. <laughs> Beautiful. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Happy Memorial Day weekend. And so I don't forget, we, we've got uh, a section of the service that uh, recognizes uh, Memorial Day weekend and the veterans and stuff later on. But I would like to have all of the veterans stand right now so we can give everyone a round of applause. Thank you, everyone, for your service. Uh, it's really appreciated. I know uh, Craig thought he might be able to make or stay here for uh, this morning's service, but uh, he, he got uh, orders, well, not orders, but you know, a, a load to deliver. So he was in yesterday and uh, uh, looked over the service to make sure I was doing everything okay. You know, <laughs> he's my helper. <laughs> we were going to uh, use some videos that he had, but we couldn't get them to work on our system. So. I got a couple of pictures for you, though, coming along. <laughs> anyway, uh, please note that the uh, geraniums will again brighten the sanctuary, and on, that will be on Pentecost Sunday, of course, and then they'll be moved out to enhance the church grounds all summer long, as it says in the bulletin. So however we're doing things different this year, uh, we've already ordered the geraniums, and if you would like to help defray the cost, they're three fifty dollars each, and you can take one of those envelopes that's in front of the, the pew there if you would uh, like to donate and just write on there uh, that they're for the geraniums for the church grounds and uh, drop them in the plate later. And we thank you for that. Of course, these days, the devotional guide's still available at the Perry Street entrance. And uh, if you get a moment, please see the article in the bulletin pertaining to uh, pledges and per capita as we're running a little bit behind in... Uh, our uh, pledges, we're spending a little bit more every month uh, than what we're bringing in. And now, since water plays an important part in this morning service, and coffee is made with water, you know how much I like coffee, <laughs> uh, this is a good time to mention that there is going to be a birthday Sunday uh, down in Butler Hall in the gym for refreshment and nourishment after the service. Okay, are there any other church-related announcements? Remembering that our congregational... Uh, prayers, joys, and concerns will be taken later in the service. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so remember to bring your Bible with you on the 12th for recognition of the, the youngest and then they're going to get Bibles too yes okay all right thank you Keith did you have something oh yeah yeah we're, we're getting there <laughs> that's the last thing on my list the zoom thanks though okay are there any prayer requests joys or concerns from the online community Uh, yes. Uh, let's remember okay. the okay. victims of all Thank domestic then shootings. Let us worship God, beginning with the prelude. Oh, wait. Kim would like to remember the victims of the school shooting. Okay. I have that in my notes then. Okay. All right, thank you.
and skin them is beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Astounding God, we come before you this day as witnesses to Christ's ascension from this realm to the heavenly kingdom. We stand in awe and wonder at what we hear and see. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the power and truth of your words. Give us courage and joy that we might be witnesses to your eternal love through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, all the people. Jesus Christ, who was crucified and I'm glad everyone knew that one stanza. <laughs> All right, let's proceed to our prayer of conf confession. Let us pray. Lord, in the rush and hurry of our society, we are always looking forward to what is next rather than enjoying the opportunity to be in the moment. We want to know what we are supposed to do after we leave the sanctuary today. We've journeyed through Lent, stood at the foot of the cross, witnessed Jesus' resurrection and his appearance to his disciples in an upper room and on the lake shore. Now, on this day, we are called to wait, and that's hard for us to do when we want to spring into some kind of action. Calm our hearts and help us to wait for the Spirit. Forgive our impatience and our lack of faith. We place our trust in your redeeming love. Amen. Jesus commanded the faithful ones to wait for the power from on high. Be patient. God's love is given to you and the power of God will enable you to be witnesses for God in this world. Be of great courage, but be still. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Amen. I'm reading Psalms 97. It's cooler up here. 
the Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are around are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his advisors, adversaries, sorry, round about. His lightning lighten the world. The earth sees the trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people behold his glory. All worshipers and images are put to shame, who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears, is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because thy judgments, O God, for thy, O God, art most high over all the earth. Thou art exalt far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for, for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you, O oh you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Our next hymn is Battle Hymn of the Republic and we'll be singing verses one, three, and four. Please stand. I'm reading Revelation 22, 12 to 14, 16, 17, 20, 21. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. 
Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city of, by the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with his testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who is thirsty come. Let him who desires take the water of life without price. He who testifies to these things say, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Andrea. Let us pray. The watchword for this day is wait. We have a hard time with that, O oh Lord. We want to get out and do something for you. We want to serve. We are itching to move and be about your work. Yet, you call us to wait until the Spirit is given to us. We are afraid of waiting because sometimes it means losing our enthusiasm. Give us courage and strength to prepare our spirits for your service. Help us to know that you are with us always, opening our hearts and minds to your work and your will for us. Help us to trust in all that Jesus said, for the time is coming when our witness will be crucial, when our words and actions will reveal your love and healing power. Make us ready, Lord, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you may have noticed this morning when um, Andre was reading that the words on the screen were slightly different than the text coming out of the Bible that we keep on the uh, podium over there. And that has to do with semantics, and semantics is the meaning of words. And it's important when studying and understanding the Bible, the Greek King James Version, New International Version, the meaning of words used is significant to our comprehension. So today, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start with some semantics. Some of those words that you saw here read from different versions, a couple different versions of the Bible, and then we're going to understand some of that because some of those words, the way that they're used, are metaphors. Now, a metaphor is a figure of speech, specifically in our case today, it's a phrase applied to an action for which it is not literally applicable. Now, from there, we're moving into the heart of the message, exemplified, as it were, from life experiences before closing on this promise of revelation that Andrea read. his work. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now in the New International Version, it says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. See, they've added there the beginning and the end, as well as changing the quickly to soon. So Jesus delivers a promise to return soon, which is from a Greek word that more accurately describes quickly from the Greek Bible. This has more to do with how Jesus is going to be coming than when Jesus is going to be coming. His return will be sudden and unpredictable, as it says in Matthew 24, 36, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So, continuing on, a couple more. In the King James Version, it said, 
It says, blessed are they, now this is in Revelation 14, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. In the New International Version, it says, blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. So we have, blessed are those that do his commandments, blessed are those who wash their robes. Now, the commandments one's pretty straightforward, but washing of the robes so that they may enter the city is where the metaphor comes in. So in today's reading from Revelation, what does that mean? Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. The washing of the robes, as mentioned here, is the metaphor for purification from uncleanliness, meaning sin. The verse pronounces a blessing on those who are cleansed from their sin, a reference to those who are saved through their faith in Christ. In Ephesians 1.7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his, that is God's, grace. So who can be saved? What must we do? Are there any guarantees? You know, in the book of James in the Bible, James says, works without faith mean nothing. Yet, faith without works also leaves us lacking. Remember from our last meeting that God is making decisions here too. And if everyone is just automatically saved, then what difference does it make whether I stand up here or not? Well, once again, at the risk of seeming ostentatious, and that means you know self-serving, making myself look good, I believe that if one person hears what God is saying through me and it makes a positive difference in that person's life, then it's important to God. It may be something said here that encourages you perhaps to study scripture and grow in Christ. It may be something said during the worship service that you take out into the world and repeat to someone else. It may be a feeling that you convey to someone a concept. Remember that when we last met, we saw in Revelation that all creation was praising the Lamb because the Lamb was the one who could open the scroll. The message ended with the words, to all, wherever it may lead. The word by which discipleship began is the final word, follow me. And so, we follow Jesus. Although the poor will be with us always, there are others who need to be acted upon by the Holy Spirit. There are so many who are lost or searching for their identity as a human being in this world today. Consider the fact that Karen and I spend a lot of time at Starbucks, me writing and before that working. We get to see a lot of people and sometimes we're led to interact with them. For example, uh, this is a, a little quick story here. A student moved to let us sit in a crowded Starbucks. I bought him a $5 gift card, and he almost cried, saying that no one had treated him kindly since he got here to go to school at Lecom. What a shame. He was gladdened to know that there are people who see him as a person and not as someone who's different or doesn't belong here just because he was an Asian. So I have a little bit longer story for you and a little vignette here. Christmas week about, oh, it had to be six or seven years ago. I'm getting old, I can't remember that. <laughs> we were, yep, you guessed it, at Starbucks. And I had noticed a young person with a physical handicap working diligently on a computer for a few weeks now, was going there. And uh, being Christmas, we purchased coffee, and I guess it's better to say that than saying we bought a round of drinks, because, you know, we're at Starbucks. So uh, that wouldn't be appropriate, right? So for everyone there, we, we got a uh, drink from Starbucks, and she just looked at me and said, no. <laughs> okay. 
So I went back up, got a gift card, wished her a Merry Christmas. She said she didn't want it, but I left it on her computer anyway. Well, we would say hi every time we saw her, and eventually she started saying hi back to us. I think that initially she was probably put off because she thought we were getting her coffee because of her disability. But then eventually she would stop and, and chat with us. And I found that she was doing web design, which gave her and I a common point for discussion, certainly. So she was showing us some of the stuff that she was working on, and I was impressed. She was using HTML6 and doing a lot of web design, doing a good job. And I recommended her to do a web page for friends of ours who were starting a business down in Jamison, PA. Over time, she started opening up just a little more, and she shared about how her business was going and where she felt she was in life. Now, one day, she came over and sat down with us and said she'd like to get our opinion. Now, her father had told her that she should not try to pursue a college degree in the biology slash medical field, and she wanted our input. Now, we had talked to her long enough uh, over the weeks or months to know that she was a very capable young woman and very diligent in her work. We highly recommended that she pursue her dreams and then stated why we thought she would succeed. I didn't want her to think that, you know, we were just patronizing her and saying, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Tell her why, why, we, why she could do it. Now, I didn't know and I didn't ask why her father discouraged her from pursuing a degree. It may be because he was attempting to protect her from disappointment, and that could be very real. But since she asked for our opinion, we gave it. And of course, she started the next semester. We followed her progress because she always studied at Starbucks. We always encouraged her, bought her coffee, <laughs> and offered to help her study, although that biology stuck a little bit tough. <laughs> and not only did she succeed, but she did so near the top of her class. We never asked her about her disability, not once. I don't know what happened, and it's not important. What is relevant is that she's now in nursing, and she's working at a local hospital. She loves her job, and she's happy. She's moved out into the world. She's gone from, I'm locked myself into this little corner where I don't want anybody to see me to, yeah, I can do this. Think about all the people that you have touched with positive encouragement. Think about all the things that you have said to other people to make a difference in their lives. Yep, this is important. Jesus said in Revelation 22, 17, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift do that. So using water as our connecting element here, on this Memorial Day weekend, as we honor veterans who have served in the military to protect our country and keep it free, I have a couple more pictures to share. So when Craig was in Iraq, they put in irrigation systems for the farmers. They didn't tell you that on the news. Now, then they filled them and taught the farmers how to maintain them. And they did full immersion baptisms. Now we had talked about this, the full immersion baptisms at uh, Faith Cafe uh, on more than one occasion because Craig had sent some videos in and they were using music from uh, one of the bands leaving September uh, as background music for the baptism when they were doing it on one of the videos. So thinking about that, we understand that there is no divisiveness in who should praise the Lamb. All creation should raise their voices in a loud praise. Just as it says in Psalm 97 verse 9, for you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. 
you are exalted far above all gods. And the psalm says that there will be joy for the upright in heart. What a blessing it is to know that whoever wants to come to Jesus can do so. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Whoever wants can come to Jesus. Black, white, Hispanic, Iraqi, Japanese, you know, anyone you can think of, whoever wants should come. Since whoever desires can come, we cannot think of some people as more deserving of the gospel than others. We dare not think that someone is not welcome here or is not worthy of the gospel because of who he or she is or was. We take the water of life freely. Because God requires obedience from us, I'm afraid that occasionally we forget that salvation is a gift. Salvation is free. Like our freedom is free. As in our reflection of freedom on this Memorial Day, gift from God through Jesus Christ. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come and buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price, it says in Isaiah 55. We are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is free in that God does not have to give it. God gives it out of God's own free will and grace. So thus, the New Testament draws to a close. Do we believe it? Do we live as if Jesus will return? That is, do we follow the story all the way to the end and hold tightly to this last promise of Jesus? After so much time, how many have lost hold of the hope and felt this promise slip through their fingers as the years go by? But the promise is certain as Revelation closes. How can we embrace anew this last promise? We can testify to what Jesus has told us. You know what happens when we believe in someone? They blossom like a watered flower. Share with everyone who thirsts. The resurrected Jesus is and will be with us through the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is coming. Amen. Do we have any uh, joys and concerns we would like to share from the congregation? I'm asking continued prayers for my mother-in-law. She's in the hospital, and um, she had caught COVID from us, which makes us feel really bad. And um, she's doing okay. It's not in her lungs. It's more of it's nausea, and she can't keep things down. So she's pretty much dehydrated in that. So they're working on getting her stronger. So thank you. for my brother Kevin. He's uh, gone through his surgery with his laryngectomy now and he's on the road to recovery. And he's trying to heal up and he has a lot of healing to do so we're asking for prayers for him. My brother Ken, he's continuing on with his treatment and he's doing good so far. And I thank everyone for all their prayers. How's his arm doing? He's doing pretty good. weeks ago I asked for prayers for Arthur's sister Donna Lakata. She had arm surgery. She's doing fantastic and I want to thank everybody for that 
And then our friend Diane Connolly, she had hand surgery, and she's doing fantastic. But now our little problem is our grandson, James Seelinger. Um, we had COVID in our household. Three had it. Arthur and I did not. We were lucky. Um, but he's, everybody's clear of it, but he is having trouble. He has absolutely no taste. He's lost his taste. Um, my daughter took him to the emergency room the other day, and he has an enlarged spleen, and he's lost over 20 pounds, and he's at home, but we've got to get him some doctor care, and uh, hopefully we can get this all straightened out. So, thank you. You're up, James. Let us pray. Eternal and loving Father, we live in an unsettled world where people long to find their way and to feel secure from lives of turbulence and hurry. We come to seek your peace and long for strength to keep our values straight. We trust in you, O oh God, straining to hear your word to us, your guidance to live by faith. We praise you that in these times you send healing in the form of doctors, nurses, and therapists, and that you have blessed us with technology and medicine. We claim your promises of wholeness as we pray for those in need. Especially, we pray for Pastor Rick and Lynn, for the family of Luana Ryan, Pete's mom, Gloria Marinelli, Sally Marinelli's mother-in-law, who has COVID, she just spoke about, Pam Bernhoff, she had a heart attack on the 25th and actually coded in the ER. Uh, she had a stint put in and is doing good. Also, pray for the families of the victims of the school shootings. We thank you for Kevin and Ken's recoveries as they move forward, for your healing graces, for Diane. And we also pray for James as he tries to recover from COVID. Help the doctors to find what they need to do to bring him back as he was. We also pray for my mom, Mary, who fell last week, and for those listed in the bulletin. Eternal God, our only hope and our help in times of trouble, we pray that you show the leaders of the nations of this world ways to work out differences. We pray that you do not let threats multiply or power be used without compassion and that your will would overrule human willfulness so that people may agree and settle claims peacefully. Hold back those who are impulsive, whether they be leaders of nations or other people who believe that they think they know what is best for others. We do not want desire or vengeance to overwhelm our common welfare. Bring peace to your people on this earth through your son, Jesus. We also pray for those sharing your word today for Presbyterian pastors in Union City and Mill Village, Reverend Robert Willard, Reverend Mary Catherine Crom, honorably retired, and of course, Reverend Rick Seifris, also honorably retired. Strengthen your church, Lord, as we look to celebrate your love for us as we approach the opportunity to call a shared pastor here. Help us to be creative in understanding your will and guide that combined PNC of Harbor Creek and Emmanuel Presbyterian churches, giving them wishes, their wisdom and discernment. We pray for courage and insight and guidance to make decisions that enhance your presence in the world today. Give us opportunities to combine our work as your body. Help us to see ourselves 
your compassion for us and your everlasting love for us through your caring eyes and sensitive heart. We pray to receive all that you have to give us this morning. May our lips and lives glorify you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will have the offering. We're starting with a call to the offering. From the creation of the world, God has freely given. We give, not as solitary givers, but in solidarity with all creation. Let us pray. May these gifts be used to build the beloved community through our unity in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, our living Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Now, the Bible calls us to pray on Memorial Day. And there's a couple of readings here. This is from 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. And then from Exodus 12:14. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. And then from Exodus 28, verse 12. And you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. 
And so we pray. On this day of remembrance for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, we pray, Heavenly Father, for the freedoms we enjoy every day. We consider how they have followed in the footsteps of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please hold our servicemen and women in your strong arms. Cover them with your sheltering grace and your presence as they stand for our protection. We also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes, and we pray for your peace, provision, hope, and strength to fill their lives. May the members of our armed forces be supplied with the courage to face each day, and may they trust in the Lord's mighty power to accomplish each task. Let our military brothers and sisters feel our love and support. Sovereign God and Lord of all nations, may we take time to reflect on the great blessings we share as a nation and as a people. Our blessings have come at a high cost to others. May we remember these sacrifices always with deep gratitude. We ask that you would grant wisdom to the leaders of our armed forces, guide and direct them in their decisions. May they be led by your will and your heart as they pursue our nation's freedom. We continue to pray for peace in our world. Lord, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please rise for our closing hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee. You are called to witness to God's love. Prepare your hearts and spirits to receive power from on high. Go into God's world in confidence, offering Jesus' water, healing, and hope to all you meet. Go in peace, and may God's peace be with you. Amen. Amen.